Hey guys, Nintendrew here. This is the Game Shell version 3.1, a do-it-yourself open source portable game console that you can build at home. Once assembled, it can play a variety of classic titles and offers an incredible amount of customization options. But is it worth the price of entry? In this video, we'll take a look at the process of building the game shell from start to finish, we'll check out exactly what it has to offer, and see if it's the next must-have system for your game collection. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's waste no time and get right to covering the basics. This is the latest release of the Game Shell Modular Portable, a build-it-yourself handheld console which runs a custom distribution of Linux and is available in three different colors. The system normally retails for just under 200 bucks, but at the time of this video it's currently listed at $159 for its grand opening sale. Although the Game Shell first launched after its successful Kickstarter in 2017, this new version comes with some updated specs and features that weren't originally available. Most notably, this upgrade comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapters on board, 1GB of DDR3 memory, and a brand new micro HDMI port for use on the big screen. But of course, what truly sets this handheld apart from other systems on the market is how it's delivered. When you open the Game Shell kit for the first time, you'll find a collection of circuit boards, wires, and plastic enclosures, and you'll be tasked with building the whole thing from the ground up yourself. This may sound like a daunting task, but in reality it's all made very simple with the included assembly instructions and its unique modular design. Each of the five main components, those being the main board, the screen, the keypad, the battery, and the speaker, are stored in their own separate protective enclosures. So, after you've assembled each of these main parts, it's just a matter of wiring everything up and popping it in the case. I won't go through this process too far in depth for this video, just because it might ruin some of the fun of trying to build it yourself. But trust me, it is a lot easier than it sounds and could be a great learning experience for any younger kids interested in computer hardware. Due to the Game Shell's unique build-it-yourself nature, another really cool aspect of the system is that everything is customizable, and I mean everything. If you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi single board computer, this is kind of like a common Raspberry Pi hobby project, but jump started with all the bits and pieces you need to build a real working handheld game console in one box. Everything included in the kit is built on the standards of open source software and open source hardware. What this means is, if you decide you want to replace the screen or the battery with something better, you can. Want to build a custom shell to really make it your own? Download the included models and you can 3D print a new one yourself. And on the software side, everything is equally hackable and tweakable as well. One thing I found particularly useful is the built-in local cloud storage app. What this does is it allows you to access the Game Shell's internal files from another computer on the same network without the need to open the thing up and access its micro SD card directly. A nice inclusion that makes adding new games and software a breeze. On the topic of its operating system, it all runs on an open distribution of Linux called Clockwork Pi. And although a basic understanding of Linux is not strictly necessary to enjoy the game shell out of the box, it might prove handy if you've got a bit of experience with it. To be totally honest, it might seem kind of counterintuitive, but I found building and using the game shell to be more challenging on the software side than the hardware. As an example, I was all ready to record for this episode a day ahead of schedule, uh, but an update for the Clockwork Pi software conflicted with some of the changes I had made and temporarily bricked my system. To fix it, I had to take it all apart, retrieve the SD card, plug it into my laptop, reinstall the whole operating system, and put it back together again. Not for the faint of heart if you're uncomfortable getting your hands dirty. But for those of us with even just a beginner level of experience with maker projects like this one, the Game Shell offers an unparalleled level of customization. Back in August of last year, after seeing countless ripoffs of the Game Boy, like the GB Boy Color featured in my bootleg game consoles video, I jokingly made a remark on Twitter that if I were to ever make my own ripoff Game Boy, I'd want to call it the Game Fella. And lo and behold, six months later, I've finally been able to make that dream a reality. I customized the whole interface, loaded it up with tons of classic games, and even wrote my own code to play some background music in the main menu. And just like that, the game fella was made a reality. I think with all his own bootleg consoles, 
Soldier Boy especially would be proud. Even without any modifications, the game shell comes preloaded with plenty of built-in software, including a full copy of Cave Story Plus. To be honest, Cave Story is one of my favorite games of all time, and this is what initially caught my eye when I was first looking into the console. For what it's worth, this is a full and faithful version of the indie classic. Other built-in software includes open-source versions of both Doom and Tyrion, as well as a few little demo homebrew games that serve as examples for those who want to try to build their own original titles at home. On top of that, a ton of work is always being done by the community in the Clockwork forums to bring more classic games to the system. In fact, that's where I found an open version of Jazz Jackrabbit, one of my favorite PC games from growing up in the mid-90s, and it too runs without a hitch. Of course, another big draw to the game shell is that the Clockwork Pi operating system powering it supports the emulator front-end RetroArch out of the box, and gives you the ability to download cores for multiple classic systems, on top of being preloaded with emulators for MAME, NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, and PlayStation. As I mentioned earlier, the game shell also comes stock with a 16GB micro SD card, which means you'll have more than enough space to store a complete library of NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance titles if you are inclined to do so, turning the handheld into a veritable smorgasbord of retro gaming goodness. Back on the hardware side, this system also offers plenty of options for custom input, including an alternate maker shell backplate with Arduino and GPIO connections, and even an optional bar of buttons which you can attach to the backside for use as left and right triggers in titles which support them. For hobbyists and tinkerers, the game shell truly is an open playground for you to tweak and modify to your heart's content. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean it's all good. I did come across a few odd shortcomings when putting together the device. For one, some of the software that's prepackaged runs pretty poorly despite not being too overly complex. Take for example this built-in Yoncat demo. It's not really a game or anything, it's just a simple animation, presumably to test the screen and speakers. But regardless, the game shell chugs when trying to play it. Kind of an odd choice to include it with the system when it doesn't run so well. Speaking of poor performance, uh, the HDMI output is basically useless in practice, because the game shell has to allocate a portion of its computing power to displaying its output on the big screen, meaning games that do run at full speed in handheld mode are often totally unplayable on the television. Definitely a bummer. On top of that, many of the built-in titles and the main interface itself do not take up the full screen, which means you'll be stuck navigating menus on this laughably tiny window in the center. Hopefully these issues will be addressed with future software updates, but only time will tell. On the topic of emulation, it does run a fair number of Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance titles with no problem, but you won't be able to play any Nintendo 64 games or anything quite that complex. The board just isn't powerful enough to handle that more graphically intensive 3D rendering, like its higher profile competitor, the Raspberry Pi 3. Finally, I noticed that the included IPS screen has kind of a bizarre checkerboarding effect, which causes vertical lines to appear wavy or zigzaggy instead of straight up and down. This is due to the screen's RGB matrix being laid out in an offset pattern rather than a more standard grid-based alignment. And in practice, that means that pixel art won't appear entirely faithful to the original. A minor gripe, but an odd problem nonetheless. I also did notice some pretty apparent screen tearing throughout my time with the console, both during gameplay and while navigating the menus. I'm not sure exactly how well you'll be able to see it on camera, but it may be an issue for you if you're particularly observant about that sort of thing. Despite these issues, overall I think the game shell is still a really compelling project for both students and hobbyists alike. It may not be the most practical purchase if you're just looking for a functional handheld to play some classic games on, but if you're interested in a fully hackable open system with unparalleled potential for customization, the game shell is a very cool hobby project which might just be right up your alley. I know it was for me. I had a ton of fun putting this thing together and really making it my own. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this review of the Game Shell version 3.1. As always, if you did like the video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and feel free to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye!
Hey guys, thanks again for watching and for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like this one, here are two more videos you might like as well. As always, if you like what I do and would like to help out the channel, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. And otherwise, I hope you look forward to the next one. Take care!